Hi, I'm Jordan, and in this Abacus video tutorial, I'll lead you through a buckling analysis of a composite panel. Buckling is an instability that leads to structural failure. This behavior is characterized by a sudden sideways deflection of a structure under compressive stress. You're likely familiar with Euler's critical load formula for column buckling, but simple expressions, unfortunately, don't exist like this for complicated structures. However, failure modes for these structures can be found numerically using finite element software such as Abacus. The buckling analysis that will be covered in this video will involve the stiffened thin shell composite panel shown here. Two cutouts are made through the panel and three stiffeners are added to increase stability. A compressive load is applied to one edge of the panel and motion is constrained with pinned, symmetry, and fixed displacement boundary conditions. For the mesh, we'll use four node conventional shell elements and do a bit of mesh refinement around the holes. Carrying out this analysis in Abacus will require creating a composite laminate with anisotropic material properties, and we'll be using a zero plus or minus 45, 90 degree symmetric layup. And that gives us a total of eight plies. We'll do a 3D conventional shell analysis using S4 elements. And the ultimate goal of this analysis is to determine the buckling mode shapes and their corresponding eigenvalues. Let's begin by opening up Abacus. We'll begin by clicking on Create Part. After renaming the part, select 3D Deformable Shell, and under Type, select Extrusion. Set the approximate size to 1, and then click Continue. Now click on Create Arc Through Three Points, and enter negative 0 0.5 comma 0, 0 0.5 comma 0, and 0, 0, 0.06 for a point that lies on the arc. Then click Add Dimension, select the curve, and then click anywhere else to define the dimension for the radius. Enter 2, and then Enter. Next, we'll move the part upwards back to the origin. To do this, click on Translate, Move, select the curve, and then click Done. Select the midpoint of the arc for the start position, and then enter the origin or simply click it within the grid. To draw the first stabilizer, click on the Connected Lines tool and zoom into the curve midpoint. Then click on the following points to draw the first stabilizer. To make the other two stabilizers, click and hold on the Linear Pattern button and select Radial Pattern. Then select the three line segments that we just drew by clicking on them while holding the Shift key. Click on the cursor icon and set the center of the pattern as 0, negative 2. Change the total angle to 10 and then the number to 2. And if we zoom out, we can see that another stabilizer was drawn to the left. We'll create the third stabilizer in the same way, except this time we'll set the total angle to negative 10. After the third stabilizer is drawn, complete the sketch by clicking Done at the bottom. 
enter a depth of 1 for the extrusion, and then click OK. Now we'll create the two holes by extruding a cut. First create a datum plane, select XZ plane, and then enter 0.1 for offset. On the top menu, we'll select Shape, Cut, and Extrude. And when prompted, select the datum plane that we just created, and then choose the far edge. We'll now sketch the circular hole. Enter 0 0.174 comma 0 0.32 for the center, and then 0 0.244 comma 0 0.32 for the perimeter point. For the rectangular hole, enter negative 0 0.254 comma negative 0 0.35 for the starting corner and then negative 0.094 comma negative 0.015 for the end point. Then click on the Create Fillet tool and type in a radius of 0.05. Then click on adjacent edges of the rectangle to fillet each of the four corners. Once that's completed, click on the X, and then Done to finish the sketch. Make sure the red arrow is pointing downward, and then click on OK. To define the composite material, switch to the Property module, then click on Create Material, select Mechanical, Elasticity, Elastic, Switch the type to engineering constants, and then type in the nine constants shown on the right side of the screen. Click OK when you're finished. Next, we'll create the composite layup. Set the initial ply count to 4 and make sure conventional cell is selected for element type. Right click on region and then edit region. Drag around the entire part to select everything. A large number of arrows appear showing the current material orientation. If you want to disable this, click on display and then None under Orientation Display. And I'm mainly just doing this because for some reason it slows down this computer. Then click on, right click on Material and Edit Material. And select the material that we created and then OK. Right click on Thickness and Edit and then enter 0.000125. Fully define the material orientation, right click on CSIS and then edit CSIS. Click on the CSIS button and then create CSIS. Make sure rectangular is selected and click continue. And then zoom in and select the following three points to define the coordinate system. Back in the coordinate system menu, click on the arrow, and then select the coordinate system we just created. Finally, enter 0, 45, negative 45, and 90 for the rotation angles of the plies. And make sure Make Calculated Section Symmetric is checked before clicking OK.
moving to the assembly module, create an instance and make it an independent instance. In the step module, create a step and then select linear perturbation from the procedure type drop-down menu and then buckle from the bottom menu. Choose Langchos for Eigensolver, and then for the number of eigenvalues, select 7. The subspace Eigensolver is typically better for smaller numbers of eigenvalues, but in this case it won't matter much. In the Load module, click on Create Load, and then select Shell Edge Load. At this point, it will be helpful to have the Views toolbar available. So in the View menu, click on Toolbars, and then Views. Now click on one of the XZ plane views, and then change the Select Entities option to Inside the Drag Shape. This will easily allow us to select all the surfaces along the top and bottom edges. So select by clicking and dragging the edge closest to the circular hole, and then enter a magnitude of 10E6 for the edge load. On the left and right edges, we have X symmetry boundary conditions. And hold shift while clicking to select both edges at the same time. For the edge nearest to the circular hole, click on Create Boundary Condition, Displacement Rotation, and then fix the U1 and U2 displacements at zero after selecting it. Finally, create a boundary condition for the edge nearest to the rectangular hole and fix the U1, U2, and U3 displacements. After applying the load and boundary conditions, move to the mesh module, click on the seed part button, and then enter an approximate global size of 0.02. To refine the mesh around the holes, we'll create a series of partitions, and these steps are optional but should improve accuracy. Create a datum plane offset from the X, Y plane, and then enter an offset of 0.5, which places the datum plane in the middle of the part along the Z direction. Then click on the Create Partition tool, click on Face, Use Datum Plane, and select the two regions containing the holes. Then select the datum plane that we just created when you're prompted to. And then finally, create partition. Then we'll create a region of padding around both holes. Back in the Create Partition menu, click on Sketch under Face, and then select both regions containing the holes. When prompted, select the XZ data plane, the one that we used a long time ago, click on Through All, and then OK. Then select the edge on the far side of the part when prompted. To add regions of padding around the holes, we'll simply sketch slightly larger versions of the hole geometries. In this case, we'll add a buffer region equal to 0.02 around each hole. 
rather than entering all the coordinates for a circle and rectangular region, this doesn't have to be super precise, so it's probably okay just to freehand draw the two regions of padding. Now click on the Seed Edges button, and if it makes your life easier, you can change the view here, and select the hole and its partition surrounding it that we just constructed. Here we'll seed by number and enter a value of 50 for the number of elements. Then select the rectangular region. And this time we'll seed by size and enter an approximate size of 0 0.01. Then click on Mesh in the top menu and Controls and select the whole part. Choose Quad for element shape and then Medial Axis for algorithm. Then select Mesh Element Type. And make sure the family is Shell and you're using a linear quadrilateral with full integration or the S4 element. Finally, click on Mesh Part Instance and then Yes at the bottom. The partitions surrounding the holes give us a couple layers of elements that follow the hole geometries before the mesh transitions into a structured square mesh. We can now submit the job, so move to the job module, create a job with the default options, and then submit it. Once the job is completed, open up the results. Clicking on Plot Contours on the Form Shape will display the first mode shape with normalized displacement, and its corresponding eigenvalue is shown in the state block at the bottom. To view the other mode shapes, click on the Frame Navigation buttons near the top right corner. The first three modes show buckling around the circular hole while buckling occurs around the rectangular hole in the following three. The seventh and final mode shape shows buckling around both holes. That wraps up this video on buckling of a composite panel. Thanks for watching.